Good afternoon, everybody. Hope all is well. I'm Dr. McGuire. With me, my special guest today is Carrie from Sally May. How are you, Carrie? I'm doing well. How are you? Awesome. Thank you for the time. So we're going to continue our conversations on scholarships, right? We know that's a, a big piece um, for many students and families to explore uh, with all those resources that they may or may not know about to help mm -hmm. them pay for college. And you, of all people, know this world perfectly. And I just wanted to take a few minutes, if you can, to share um, what scholar. Well, first tell us about Sally May, and then we'll transition into what scholarship opportunities that you actually provide. So I don't think a lot of people know, you know, too much of that. So here we are. Yeah, no, absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Um, probably the most important thing that I would say specifically related to Sally May as a company is... I think oftentimes our name is associated with the, the borrowing side of paying for, for college. But what Sally May is here to do is be an education solutions provider. And what that means is provide educational resources, scholarship resources, um, anything from, you know, how do I write an essay to what is a college admission application, right? Just to kind of help students understand how to get from finishing high school into that next phase of whatever higher education they choose to, you know, explore, whether it's trade school, you know, two-year school, four-year school. So um, a lot of free resources out there. And I think it's just really connecting the dots and, and kind of, it's a cumbersome process. It's confusing. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. So we're trying to just kind of break it down and, and provide some information. Right. That's good stuff. So talk to me about your scholarship program and what that entails. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a couple different types of scholarships. Um, Sally May actually, so the Sally May Fund is the philanthropic arm of Sally May. So there actually are two, well, there's actually three scholarships that we run in partnership with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. And these are, one is for high school seniors, one is for students in graduate school, and another program is for current students that are getting close to graduating but need a little bit of help to pay a balance to kind of get them over that, that finish line. Um, the other piece is searching for scholarships, right? So, so Sally Mae does provide a free online scholarship search tool that allows a student to essentially create a profile, right? Actually, parents can create profiles as well. So if parents are looking to help their student, you know, search for scholarships, they can create their own profile too. But essentially, the, the more information built into the profile, the better the tool can essentially connect that family to scholarships that that student may be eligible for. And I say that is to say things like, you know, you could have an affiliation with a certain group or volunteer activity, um, race, ethnicity, you could be a child of a veteran, right? There's, there's a lot of different pieces that scholarship companies look for. And so those are the types of of um, questions that that profile will ask. Mm -hmm. How much time do you think, with, on the average, I know it's a loose question, but do parents need to really dedicate searching for scholarships to, like, all in, right? Yeah. And I can tell you from experience, so I have two boys in college right now, so this is a little more personal to me, um, even though I've worked in this industry for over 20 years. Um I will say, and I think this tends to be one of those stumbling blocks for folks, it, it it takes time, right? So there is some effort that is put into searching for scholarships, um, identifying the deadlines of those scholarships and how that company will accept submissions. And it's something that you and I have talked about in the past. It could be anywhere from you know writing an essay, which might be a little more time consuming. It could be a simple application that just asks demographic information, it could be videos, poems, a whole, an entire host of avenues. I think scholarship companies hope to cut down the time, but I will tell you, even with the aggregator tools, they do try to help, again, direct students to scholarships that fit their profile to cut down on the time that you're searching online for, for opportunities. But, but it, it does take a little bit of resource and some persistence and, and just the more you apply for, the better your chances are of actually securing money. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the the few stumbling blocks for parents and families? Like, like why don't they, why do, what holds them back from getting from point A to point B? 
I think, and actually we even see this in some of the research that Sally Mae does, the majority of families that do not apply for scholarships, there are two reasons that they indicate they don't. One, they don't believe that they will qualify. They, you know, scholarships, I think there's a general misconception that they are only for the most academically gifted or athletically gifted, right, person. And that simply just isn't true. The second reason is the time commitment, right? There is there is an assumption that, well, if it's harder to receive, am I, you know, it's almost like a return on investment is calculation is done. If there's a perception that I'm not going to receive a scholarship, do I want to dedicate the time in doing so? So I do think it's driven primarily by those two uh, misconceptions. But where, where did they get that from, though? Where does that stem from? I, I really don't know. I think it's just an overall... Um, maybe lack of, of good information, right, being provided and, and seeking that these are accessible. Again, it, it put a little work into it, but I, I think that sometimes we just kind of have this, I don't know why we have a preconceived notion that you have to be top of your class or, right. you know, the star baseball player or something like that. Um, I don't think oftentimes that you realize that there are scholarships. When I say there are scholarships for everybody, I truly mean there are scholarships for everybody, you just have All to right. do that. So with that said, and I was going to ask you that, um, not to put you on the spot because I didn't ask you that prior, um, what are some of the cool, unique scholarships that are out there? Yeah, um, no, it's a really great. I mean, I know you hear about this sometimes, but I actually have a, left, a lefty in my house. So there actually are scholarships for people that are left-handed. There are scholarships that, um, some of the more interesting ones I have seen, oh gosh, I forget the name of the scholarship now, you're putting me on the spot. But there was there was a scholarship that students could enter. It was around prom season, kind of a more traditional kind of academic year, springtime season. And you could submit, you know, the most unique prom dress that you had created on your own. It could be anywhere from, you know, you actually literally, literally sewed a, you know, outfit or you created it out of other materials. You know, I mean, it was really kind of unique just to kind of an expression, right, is more of an artistic expression scholarship i've seen them for you know video gaming right yeah. so if you have a gaming you know there are scholarships out there that allow you specific to you know your interests not necessarily your academics so there's a lot of really cool ones i think there's a puppeteer scholarship right maybe maybe that's something that you're interested in there's a scholarship for that and you would perhaps not know that it existed all right so i came across one the other day yes um one for blue-eyed people. There you go. It's, it's always hard to believe you can't make the, you can't make it up, right? It's just just yep. crazy, crazy. Yep. Um. All right. So one thing before we finish, um, regarding the essay in scholarships, do you recommend? Now I'm putting you on the spot. Um, would you recommend parents or students getting a tutor, a coach for that essay piece? Yeah, I mean, it, absolutely. I would, I would have somebody read it for for sure. And there are tips and resources that exist. Certainly, there are some on Sally May's website. There are others. Um, you know, checking with your guidance counselor, or other um, counselors, and 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 support services. What are some tips on how to approach writing an essay? Sometimes, and I, I don't want to say that every scholarship uses the same prompt, but if you can create a solid essay, again. Perhaps there's an English teacher that could be helpful to you or a parent or a, a, a friend. Always have somebody edit and proofread. I absolutely think that's a great idea. But creating one really solid essay will be key because many times you can use pieces of that mm -hmm. within each individual application, even though it's not the exact same question. Many times scholarship providers ask things like, well, what are your future aspirations? That's a pretty common question right? What are you looking to do in your future? So perhaps focusing on some of those general concepts in a really good essay. Yeah. Build a foundation to, you know, kind of send it to lots of different people. 